starting stuff? Yes. Oh, this is great. I'm really loving this now. Okay, just before I start, I've had, can you hear me? Yes. I've had three coffees today, so I'm like really jittery already. So am I talk too fast? And if I do, please put up your hand and I will slow down. I'll notice it. Just, just let me know if I forget. Um, so thank you for coming to our junior dev chat today. Most likely because Ben was here and you came along and now I'm stuck, you're kind of stuck with me. But we're going to learn a bit about Fast AI today. Um, my name's Akasha and let's do this. So we're going to start with talking about sponsors. We would not be here without them today. And not only them, we would be here without all the organizers and everyone in the blue shirts who volunteered their Saturdays away. I'm all about the clapping today, like this is great. <laughs> Okay, we're going to dive really, really deep. We're going to start talking about me really well. So yeah, if you're questioning the accents, I'm from Ireland, not the typical ginger one, the other one. So I studied financial math and actuarial science in Ireland, and I moved to Melbourne in September, I think, yeah, September, it's almost been a year, and started working at Redify as a graduate data scientist. I did maths in uni, I did not do any of the fancy machine learning, and all these buzzwords, I kind of started and I was like, I've got to start learning. <laughs> got to learn what to do in this job. So I came up to machine learning and this giant question that seems to exist around all these fancy buzzwords, right? What do they mean? So we're all going to get on the same page if you seem to already know. Does anyone here do machine learning? No? Yes? Okay, see a few hands. Pretend we don't. Let's get on the same page. Um, so AI essentially is as close as we get to a fake human being. Kind of says it in the name. It can sense, it can adapt, and it can react to different information that it's provided with. Whereas machine learning is just a subset within that, and it's where a program has been given a lot of data, focus on the word a lot, it needs thousands and thousands and thousands of different data points to be able to do anything meaningful. And what it can do is it'll look through all of the data, and it'll give you some kind of interpretation and predictions from it. It's quite similar to what we can do. We can do it with like, hey, if I give you five data points, you'll get something out of it. You'll be able to infer something. Machines can just do that at a really big scale. That's about it. And then there's deep learning, the other big word I've seen. It's not really big, but like, it's a buzzy word. And the thing inside that is neural networks. It's made up of a lot of different neural networks, which is essentially just the way that these models can learn. So think about neural networks as just our own nervous system. If I'm standing, pretend this is a fire, really, really close to it, and my hand's about to be in it. I don't know why I would do that, but my hand would sense that, and my nerves would sense that, and it would pass it along. Neurons will start firing and be like, no, 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 you're being an idiot. Pull your hand away. This is dangerous. Neural networks are the exact same. You give it an input, it'll go through different layers, understand different things at each layer, and it'll give you kind of a classification at the end of this is what's happening. So I've talked about all of this, but I'm here to talk about Fast AI. What is Fast AI? It kind of says it in its name. It's just a library that's fast. That can do machine learning kind of fast. That's about it. It's nothing special, nothing crazy. But what's kind of interesting and what really got me into this was the fact that they have this ethos of making machine learning on cool again. Cool is kind of this thing that we give to people that are like unattainable. Right? Machine learning is something that's like, oh, data scientists do that, or data people do that. Not everyone can do this. But they're taking that fact away from it and making it a lot more accessible to everyone. So it's fast, but why? What is making it so special? Transfer learning. So transfer learning is this technique that they use in the industry. And it's the easiest to explain with a really quick example. So think of the IMDB database. Right? There are thousands and thousands and thousands of reviews of different movies. Some are positive, some are negative. And I'm not going to waste my time and just walk, like, read through them. I want to be like, hey, give me all the positive ones and all the negative ones so I can watch the good movies. But if you feed all the data into a machine learning model, it's going to start being like, okay, words. How do they react to each other? What do they relate to? It's going to spend a lot of time figuring out English, essentially, and then be like, okay, this is positive, this is negative. It's already used up a lot of the data that might already be existing in the database. So how about we train it on something like Wikipedia? Wikipedia is just filled with thousands of articles in English. You train it on Wikipedia where you essentially train it to learn English. It'll figure out all those words and stuff. And then you add the IMDB database at the end of it. So now it knows English. 
Now all I wanted to do is figure out this is a positive review and this is negative, right? So what this essentially has done is because this bit is a pre-trained model, I don't have to spend time doing that again. I'm adding on my extra bit of data. It's taken the time away from training it, but also just lets you use a lot less data in the first place. So fast AI is pretty really, really good at, really, really good at? <laughs> Somewhere along those words, right? Too much coffee. <laughs> And it's really good at computer vision and natural language processing. Computer vision is essentially everything. Like, so if we give it an image, it'll be like, this is this. I classify this as a bear. Or it'll pick up a different image, like, this is a chair in this image. Essentially, a computer can see. And natural language processing is something you see and use every day, right? You write an email, you get a typo, and fix it, auto correction. Or you're sending a text, for the next few words pop up, natural language processing. So, how do we actually do this, right? It exists, that's great. This is even more accessible now with things like cloud. You don't need to have a really fancy machine that can run all these things and spend thousands of dollars on it. You spend a dollar an hour on something like Azure, pour it all up into a virtual machine, and you're good to go. Um, if you are gonna do it, I would recommend using Jupyter Notebooks just because it's easier to see your results constantly, go back, test things out, fix everything up. And I think that's all like the pre-talk, right? Let's get into the demo. I'm like echoing stuff. Okay. So what we want to get to, did that just die? <laughs> oh God. Yeah, let me just do a demo about a machine learning model learning. Please learn. <laughs> Yes. Okay. We get to a platform like this, where if you give it an image, so let's select an image. Okay, I see what's happening. My hair is getting into this. That makes sense. So I give it a teddy bear. I ask it to analyze it. It'll tell me it's a teddy bear. Pretty simple example, but it kind of will get the point across, right? We can try a different image. Let's do a black bear. And I swear, these aren't images the model has seen before. I'm not tricking you all, I swear. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. <laughs> Please tell me it's a black bear. Yes, okay. It says it's a black bear. Um, so look, let's get into the actual code. Uh, you'll obviously pull in, okay, I'm not gonna be able to jump here because I have to like scroll now. So you pull in your fast AI library and for computer vision, you pull in the dot vision part of it. And that's it, that's all you need to pull in. Takes like a couple of seconds, and that's it. I wanted its chest, so we talked about like it needs a really small data set now, and it can do this really, really fast. So I was like, right, let's try this with the crappiest little data set I could create, and that's gonna happen with Google. All right, went into Google Images, I downloaded all the URLs. Into folders, so I got black bears, got teddy bears, and grizzly bears, and I asked it to download images. And you can see as I'm scrolling, there's a lot of errors, quite a lot, um, but that's okay because then I can ask it to verify those images and essentially it'll go through your whole database and delete everything that's corrupted or doesn't open. So I went in and I was like, okay, going back to the really small data set, I only asked to download 400 images for each and now I have about 350 images left in each of my labeled data sets. Data? Data sets. So kind of going back to the fact that this is a library, everything needs to be in a certain format for it. So your data needs to be in an image data bunch for it to be able to get it. So when you think of machine learning models, cool, you give it data, it learn, but you need to be able to test how well it's done, right? If you're just telling things to it, like, hey, this is a black bear, and it tells you back that that's a black bear, it's kind of useless. <laughs> so we gotta test it somehow. So usually what you do is you split your data set into a training set and then a testing set. And it can do that for you. So you just tell it that, hey, I want 20% of my data to be set aside as my validation set. And it also offers this thing called data augmentation. So data augmentations is this technique that they use in industry where you essentially fabricate your data set. Bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds vague, I know. But so look at this image, for example. If you flip it left to right, it's the same image to us, right? We can kind of just be like, yeah, let's move around a bit. But to a computer, it's a completely new image. It's just pixels on a screen for it, and it's like, nope, that's not here, it's different. 
So you've essentially doubled your database just by flipping them around. I didn't do that because we're going back to really, really small data sets. We're going to see how well it can do. So I've got my database. Database. Data bunch. Wow, words are really hard today. <laughs> And I can ask you to show me all my classes. So I've got my black bears, grizzly bears, teddy bears. Quick sample to make sure it's labeled the correct thing. But a black bear is actually a black bear, and a teddy is a teddy. That's definitely a dog dressed as a teddy. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, this is a Google image database, so let's go with it. We'll see if we'll figure it out. Um, I ask you to give me an overall view. So I've got about 835 images in my training set. This is where I'm like, this is black bears. Learn how to figure this out. And then I'll test it on about 200 images across my data set. So I've got a clean data set. We're ready to go, essentially. So let's go. So all I ask it to do is create a CNN. So CNN stands for a convolutional neural network. This is going back to neural networks. Convolutional neural networks is just the type of neural networks that are really good for images. All you need to know. Literally, I don't know any more than that either. So, um, so you see, you pull in your data that's now in a data image, image data bunch. And the next bit is you pull in a model. So this is the tr uh, transfer learning part of your models. So I pulled in ResNet 34 as a pre trained model. That model's been trained on about 14 million images. So you can identify colors, shapes, circles, lines, everything like that. And I wanted to add on my data at the end of it and just be like, now just know how to do black bears, teddy bears, and grizzlies. That's it. And it gives me an error rate as my metric for figuring out how well it's actually done. And I ask it to fit its cycle, so fit one cycle, and I wanted to go through the whole neural network from start to scratch twice. And to do that, it's taken two and a half minutes. And that's it. Like, this is the whole fast AI people. Fast. And we got it. Yes. And so our error rate in that time with a really, really small data set. Like, I know it sounds kind of big, it's like 800 images, but that's very small in machine learning terms. It's now got a 2.4% error rate. That's 98% accuracy, essentially. With having done no tuning, like, we've literally done nothing other than, here's data, go learn it. So what does it actually learn? Let's look at some results. You can ask it across its top losses. So what is it getting wrong? Really, really wrong. So if you look at the first image, it thought, thought that that was a black bear, but it was actually a grizzly bear. And you can kind of tell what the models picked up on, right? So you can pick up, black bears have black fur. It thought that was a black bear. The next one, it thought that was a grizzly bear, but it was actually a black bear. I don't trust my Google images here, because that definitely <laughs> looks like a grizzly bear to me. But the machine, mo the model is doing what it's being told to do, right? It's learning. You can also ask it to plot its most confused matrices. Like, what is it getting wrong a lot of the times? And it's getting wrong the grizzlies and the black bears. Teddy bears, it has no issues. It's like, straight line edges everywhere, we're good to go. But like, black and grizzly bears are a bit harder for it. But even then, it only got five images wrong. Out of the 200 it tested, only the five. Cool, so we've got this far without having done any kind of tuning. So let's see if we can get the error rate to go down even more. And where this gets a little bit complicated, this is the hardest, I swear I will kind of dive into it. Uh, is learning rate. So learning rate essentially is how quickly or how slowly your model will learn. Anyone play golf here? Okay, I'm gonna butcher this analogy, so deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're trying to get to pretend the hole is over there, I'm gonna start hitting from here. I'm gonna use a driver, right, to go really, really far. A lot further than just the wall. But if I keep using a driver, it's just gonna keep bouncing back and forth. You're never gonna really get close to the hole. But on the other hand of it, if I keep using a put, putter, put, whichever, uh, the really skinny one, you're going to hit really slow and really close, you'll get there. Don't get me wrong, but it'll take ages. Or if you think about a golf course that's kind of tough and there's like different dips and stuff, you might just get caught in like a little dip. You won't be able to get out of it because you won't be able to put enough force behind it. Unless you're really strong. I don't know. I don't do golf. But the whole compromise between the two is the fact that you start with a driver, and the closer you get, you start using a putt to be able to go smaller and smaller and smaller. Same thing applies with learning rate. So as you can see, this graph is a bit iffy because it's quite small. But what you want to be doing is minimizing loss in your model. Like the lowest amount of loss is the best model you'll get. And that's kind of about here, right? That's the lowest number you can see on the graph. 
So the model is that's AI is telling me it's up here. Why? When you look at here, this line gets really, really kind of flat. That's going really slow. Sure, it'll get to a local minimum, but it'll take a really, really long time to get there. So we're doing a compromise here again. We're going to find the steepest downward descent, which is going to be kind of about here-ish. It's going down pretty fast around there. And we'll make it learn in just that range. So we'll go to the minimum really quickly, but also be careful enough not to go too slowly. All right? And having sliced it to that specific range and made it run about three times, so running the model now three times took about five minutes, and I got it down to 1.9% error rate. That's a 98% proper accurate thing. It's as good as it's going to get with five, what, 800 images in each of them. And I can export that, which brings me back to our platform. So the whole point of this is yeah, okay, it looks pretty. There's about six or seven lines of code, essentially, that you need at the end of the day. Once you have a data set, not much more else. You don't really need the understanding and the maths of matrices and all the linear algebra behind us to be able to kind of get through this. So what they're trying to do is get subject matter experts involved in machine learning. So if you're a doctor, I, I mean, I get that this is a lot more complicated, but I'm going to simplify it down. If you're a doctor who deals with cancer, pretend, cancer cells and non-cancer cells look really different. He knows all the differentiations between the two. I won't. But he also does not have my background of data science. But what FastAI is doing is providing a platform where he can input his own images, set up a database, and be able to compare the two, and help narrow down his search time for things like examining cells. So this is great. Models and AIs can be used for good sometimes. This is kind of going back to being right after Ben talking about ethics in AI. <laughs> so, I mean, you can create models that just give you really cute teddy bears and give it images like your managing director. <laughs> and you can ask it to analyze your managing director. And it'll tell you something. I really hope it's not still a black bear. <laughs> it's a teddy bear. <laughs> so AI can be good when it's used for adorable things like this. Please don't use it for something terrible. That would be great. And yeah, that's about it for me today. <laughs>